I'm hoping that to to start here, you can kind of help me out. I'm I'm struggling to define aging, hmm. and some say aging is itself uh, a disease. I'm not sure where you kind of stand on this, and then others say, well, it can't be a disease because it occurs from birth or, or maybe even from conception, and uh, at this time of of life function appears to be improving, not declining. As someone that studies the biology of aging, how do you define it? Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, it's a great, great question. I wish I had a really simple answer for you. So first I'll tackle this, is aging a disease question? Um, because I think, uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it leads to a lot of, uh, disagreement and angst. And, and I don't really, I, I think it's really a semantic argument. I, I don't think it really matters whether we define aging as a disease and in, in the big, big picture. I think what's more important to appreciate is that biological aging is the root cause of most of the major diseases, causes of death and disability in developed countries. And regardless of whether we define biological aging as a disease, that underlying relationship between biological aging and all of the major causes of death and disability is really what's important. Because what that means is that if we can understand and eventually modify biological aging, we can have an impact on all of these different functional declines and diseases that, that go along with old age. Um, now, the definition of aging, again, is gets back, get, gets, gets complicated very quickly. I think the, the first thing I would say is, you know, I've already started by defining it as biological aging. And I try to actually use that phrase because I think it's important to be precise. That's the only way we can communicate and understand each other is if we're precise in the words that we use. And aging by itself means different things to different people. Some people think of chronological aging, just the passage of time. That's mm -hmm. a legitimate definition. Given what I've been doing for the last 20 plus years, which is studying the biology of aging, I naturally think about the biology of aging when I say aging. So that's what I mean. And, and all I really mean by that are the cellular, molecular, tissue, organ level changes that happen as, a, as an organism goes from being young to old and the mechanisms that underlie those changes. <clears throat> I think um, you alluded to this idea that, you know, aging actually starts during development. I think to some extent that's true. The same processes that are active during development continue to be active post-developmentally and probably contribute to the functional declines that go along with aging. So they are a part of the biology of aging. So I'm sorry, I wish I, I wish I had a 30 second answer for you, but I think this is this is a, a complicated topic and, and it, it doesn't lend itself to simple answers. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned there getting to the kind of the root cause. I think people, when they think about the common diseases that that are responsible for premature death today, probably cardiovascular disease and cancer comes to to mind top of the list there are other mm -hmm. things of course but let's take athero atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease as an example here is the aging the cellular processes that you're talking about are they preceding the the sort of fatty plaque that's building up in the artery are they are they upstream of that and then the disease as we know it that ends up killing someone is a kind of manifestation of the aging process is that how you see it uh, I, I think that's fair. I, I think, you know, um, upstream is, uh, is, is probably the, the right term. The way I would think about it is, so it probably depends on the specific disease. So you mentioned cancer, which is a whole, uh, cancer is sort of its own unique beast that we can kind of dive into, but cancer, cardiovascular disease, dementia, kidney disease, metabolic dysfunction, immune senescence, which leads to increased risk of infection, right? All of these have age as their greatest risk factor. And in fact, it's not a linear relationship. What I mean by that is that your, your increase in risk of developing these diseases doesn't go up the same amount each year. It actually goes up exponentially as you get older. So we can have a discussion around whether aging, biological aging is mechanistically causal for the disease, which is kind of where you were immediately going. Are the molecular mechanisms that I, that I associate with biological aging actually causing the plaques, right, that go along with cardiovascular disease? 
that's going to depend a little bit on the disease. And, and I think those are important discussions to, to have and to understand. I would say first principle, though, is that just the simple relationship between age and risk of developing all of these different diseases shows us that that the biology of aging is at a minimum creating a physiological state that places you, everyone, at increased risk of developing these diseases. And then the mechanistic links between aging biology and disease processes are going to be somewhat different for, for different diseases. So for cardiovascular disease, again, it's not only one cell type, one tissue type at play here. So there are going to be functional changes within the heart itself that are driven by the biology of aging. So things like mitochondrial dysfunction that we know contribute to declines in heart function, which lead to decreases in circulatory capacity with age. And then there are sort of systemic effects that are not unique to the heart, such as inflammatory signals given off by senescent cells and other what we call hallmark of aging that contribute to vascular dysfunction uh, and and dysfunction in other tissues and organs. So again, I'm going to keep saying this. There's not a simple 30 second answer to any of these things, but I think the answer is probably both. Right, aging is causally contributing to mechanisms specific to each individual disease, and it's there are these systemic changes that go along with aging that maybe are indirectly influencing risk of developing these diseases. Hey, friends. The scientific evidence on lifestyle habits that lead to longevity is clear. Now it's time to put this knowledge into action. I'm excited to announce the Living Proof Longevity Challenge, a 12-week program to build evidence-based lifestyle habits to optimize longevity. My team and I have transformed over hundreds of hours of conversations with experts on aging, nutrition, and exercise into a life-changing 12-week program that will challenge you to develop habits that lead to a longer, better life. This is a unique opportunity to gather health data about yourself that has the potential to change your life for the better. You'll start by testing 10 longevity biomarkers that tell the truth about where your longevity stands right now, today. Following that, you'll get a personalized longevity score to guide your 12 weeks of habit building that will boost your score and improve your biomarkers for the better. After the challenge, you'll retest your 10 biomarkers and see the proof of how powerful these science-backed habits really are. Head over to theproof.com forward slash living proof to download your zero cost copy of the Living Proof Longevity Challenge today. That's theproof.com forward slash living proof. Look forward to joining you on this journey. I want to come back to hallmarks of aging and, and biological age and we can maybe discuss sort of the epigenetic clocks that, that are sure. out there and people are talking about. Um, but before that, there's this this idea, and I think this kind of is a continuation of what you're talking about here, the relationship between aging and these, I guess, age-related diseases, maybe we would call them. There's this idea out there that you can get to maybe 80 or 90. And maybe this is what we all aspire to. Um, and you just die in your sleep without having endured a, a kind of overt disease state, you know, dying of old age, so to speak. That seems to be a goal. Many people will, would say, look, I'd like to just get to 80 or 90 in good health and then just uh, pass away peacefully. Is that possible that the, the body can kind of just shut down because the cells are, are generally aged versus some sort of more overt disease like a brain tumor or a lung cancer or a heart attack, et cetera? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, clearly it's possible because some people do achieve something close to that, right? But uh, uh, even then, I think uh, I'm, uh, I would speculate that that there are, I mean, even in those people, right, there are going to be sub-disease, sub-clinical functional declines. And, and so this is actually, I think, an important point is sometimes in these discussions, we focus way too much maybe on diseases, right, which are clinically diagnosed conditions based on symptoms, right? But even in people who are non-diseased or that you're still going to see functional declines that go along with aging, there has yet to be an 85-year-old that has walked this earth that has been functionally the same as they were at 25, even if they don't have a disease. So, so I don't think it's, I think it's probably unrealistic to think that even in that kind of, you know, best case scenario, 
that you aren't going to still have some functional declines preceding any disease diagnosis. Having said that, it is absolutely possible to push those functional declines back, minimize those functional declines, push the diseases of aging back later into life and maintain quality health you know, as long as possible. And, and for me personally, and I think for many people in the field, that really is as much or more the goal than it is to significantly increase human lifespan. It's, it's really you know, about this concept of health span, maximizing the healthy periods of life, maintaining function. I really personally, I focus a lot on function, you know, as much as I do disease, because I think that's really what's important to most of us, right? We want to be able to do the stuff that we want to do as long as possible, maximize our ability to enjoy life. And that's really, you know, a lot about how well are you able to function. So I think that's, it's important just to keep that, that in mind and not get carried away by worrying about only diseases. Um, So again, I don't think it's likely that you can be in perfect health until you're 95 and then, you know, not wake up the next morning, but it absolutely is the case that we can, we can maintain a good quality of life very, very late into life. um, uh, And, and maximize those, the, those years of health. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the goal being to sort of optimize function and to, I guess, uh, compress the years of disease that we're, uh, that are affecting our function. So we're, right. we're enjoying a longer health span. How does this relate to the hallmarks of aging? So if you're at dinner and, and someone says, okay, Matt, I'm on, I'm on board, this idea of optimizing my function, um, what should I know about the hallmarks of, of aging? Why are they important for us to kind of uh, piece this together and then set up a lifestyle um, and or other interventions that give us the greatest chance of enjoying uh, the lo- the longest health span possible. Yeah. So, so I would say, first of all, before we dive into the hallmarks themselves, probably the most important thing is just to appreciate that, that there really is this biology of aging, right? That there are uh, biological processes that determine the rate at which different animals age and within the same species within humans, the rate at which individual people age. So there is this, these, this biological process that we can study and understand very much like development as a process. Um, and in principle, when we understand it well enough, we can modify that biology in a way that will delay the functional declines and diseases that go along with aging. And in fact, we've been extremely successful. We as a field now have been extremely successful at doing this in laboratory animals. There are multiple interventions that have been shown to significantly delay the biology of aging, target the hallmarks of aging, increase lifespan and extend health span in every laboratory organism where this has been attempted and probably most relevant to people in mammals like mice and rats, we can increase lifespan 20, 30, all the way up to 50% by targeting the biology of aging. So independent of what that biology is at the molecular level, just understanding that is, I think, probably the most important thing. Now, I think the other thing to to, to appreciate is, again, as a field, we've been pretty successful at starting to understand what that biology is. And that's where the hallmarks come in because now we can start to give names to these highly evolutionarily conserved processes that seem to play a fundamental role in modulating the rate at which different animals age or, or different individuals within a species age. And so depending on who you talk to and depending on the day of the week, there's nine or 10 or maybe 11 of these hallmarks of aging and they're overlapping and interacting. So it's a little bit messy, but um, but we can give names to these things. And they include things like telomere shortening, which lots of people have heard of. We've known about telomere shortening as a potential contributor to aging for more than 20 years now. They include mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria are, uh, of course, Um, sort of colloquially referred to as the powerhouses of the cell. They produce a lot of the molecular energy that that our cells need in order to function. Mitochondrial damage is a hallmark of aging. So decreased power output is one way to think of it. Um, Senescent cells we can probably talk about is another uh, hallmark of aging. And so there, there are nine of these things Epigenetic changes is the one that probably is getting the most attention um, right now. 
uh, DNA damage. So these are all cellular, molecular processes that that scientists in the field, um, there's some consensus around the idea that these contribute directly to the biology of aging and thereby to the functional declines and diseases that go along with old age. Mm -hmm.